Here's a lesson for section 2.2, sampling principles. In the previous lesson, we looked at how to make a hypothesis about the relationship between two variables. What we're going to do now is learn how to properly conduct a survey um, to test that hypothesis about the relationship between um, the two variables. In order to properly con conduct a survey, you have to know how to um, choose a sample from a population that um, accurately reflects the, um, the opinion of the entire population or the points of view of the entire population. So before we can learn the different sampling principles, let's first, we have to know what these three definitions mean here, population, sample, and census. So first off, a population is the whole group of people or items being studied. So I'm just going to give you an example here. So let's say um, our, our administration decided that um, our school is going to get a mascot. Okay, and they wanted to um, find a way to figure out um, what mascot the students would want at our school. The entire population um, for a survey um, for the administration would do for our school, the entire population um, would be every student in the school. Okay, so that would be the entire population. Um, next would be um, definition of a sample, is any group of people or items being selected from a population. So let's say the administration didn't want to survey the entire population, they didn't want to ask every student at the school. What they could do is just sample a group of people from the school. So they could ask, I don't know, maybe only the grade nines, maybe only the grade tens. Maybe they would just survey, you know, the first 20 people who showed up to school in the morning. There's different ways to choose a sample from the entire population. And we'll look at the different ways there are to do that. Um, and we'll discuss um, how you want to make sure you choose um, a, Choosing a sample is important. You want to make sure you choose a sample that represents the entire population. Next, census. Um, a census is a survey of all of the members of a population. Okay. Um, you'll notice I have a question down here as well. Why is the whole population not always surveyed when a hypothesis what the population is to be verified? So, you know, we've made a hypothesis about an entire population. Why not just do a census? Why not actually survey all of the members of the population? Well, well, let's say our survey was, uh, you know, had, had to do with the population of all of Canada. Um, are we going to take a census um, of everyone in Canada um, about a certain question? Um, you know, that's not always going to be feasible. Um, we don't have the time for every survey we want to do to ask every single per person from a population, especially if the population is very large. So a census, um, you can't always take a census because we just don't have the time or the resources. So what we need to know how to do is take a sample. We need to know how to survey, you know, pick a group of people from the entire population that actually represents the entire population. So let's look at, so, you know, sometimes um, it is suitable to do um, a census, depending on the size of the population, and sometimes it's not. So from these four choices here, which one of the following um, would it be suitable to choose a sample instead of doing a census? So A, find the most common make of car in the school parking lot. B, find your family's favorite food. C, find the most popular video game among grade 9 students in your class. Or D, find the favorite video game among grade 9 students in Canada. So we've got four options here. We need to decide which one of these should we use a sample for. So let's first look at, okay, which ones um, could we easily do a census? Which ones could we survey, you know, all members of the population? So A, common make of car in the school parking lot. So the population would be every car in the parking lot. You know, our parking lot's pretty small, so it'd be pretty easy to take an inventory um, of all the mix, makes of cars in, a, in our parking lot. So I don't think we would need to do a sample for that one. We could survey the entire population. B, you find your family's favorite food. Um, you know, and I'm assuming here we're talking about just your immediate family. Um, you know, it wouldn't be hard just to uh, survey the entire population. Just ask everyone in your family what their favorite food is. You wouldn't need to take a sample. Like, not don't only ask your mom or only ask your brother or sister kind of thing. You know, ask everyone in your family. That's feasible to do. Um, C, find the most popular video game among grade 9 students in your class. So, you know, in this class that you're in, uh, let's say in our math class, um, you could ask the entire population. You know, we've only got about 23, 24 kids in our class. Uh, you might as well just ask all of them. You don't need to take a sample of them. Like, don't only just ask your best friends what their favorite video games are. Um, they'll probably be pretty similar to yours. You, you should ask the whole population to get a good representation of the entire class. D, find the favorite video game among grade 9 students in Canada. 
Okay, so this one we might want to do a sample. It would be awfully hard to ask every grade 9 student in Canada what their favorite video game was. Okay, so because the population for this are all grade 9 students in Canada, you're not going to be able to ask all of them. Okay, so it would be, you would, uh, a sample would be the most suitable method to survey, um, to take a survey on this, this topic here. So, you know, you might want to ask, like, you know, all the grade 9 students, um, from from one school in each province or something like that, okay? But we'll talk about the different ways to do sampling uh, coming up in just a second here. So the answer for this one, we think D, um, a sample would be most suitable for D. The other three, you could survey the entire population. You could do a census for the other three, no problem. Okay, now let's look at the types of sampling. There's two main types of sampling. There's random sampling and non-random sampling. A random sample is a sample in which all members of a population have an equal chance of being chosen. Um, and a non-random sample is using a method that is not random to choose a sample from a population. Okay, so a random sample, uh, let me just give you a quick example. Like, for example, at chapel on Tuesdays, we have our cookie drop. That's a random sample because, you know, every student in the population has their name in the cookie jar. Um, I'll write cookie draw here. That's our example. Every student has their name in the jar. Um, and everyone has an equal chance of being chosen. It's chosen at complete random. Mrs. Collin puts her hand in the jar, pulls out her name. It's chosen at complete random. Everyone has an equal chance of being chosen. That's a random sample. Everyone in the population, everyone at the school, has an equal chance of being chosen. Um, so that's a random sample. Non-random sample. Um, Let's say for the cookie draw, Mrs. Cullen didn't have a jar with everyone's names in it. She just, you know, went up there and said, you know, this week I think I'm going to choose this person for, for such and such reason. You know, or else they said, you know, I really like this dude and I'm just going to choose them this week for the cookie. That, that's non-random, okay? Everyone in the population doesn't have an equal chance of being chosen, okay? Um, so random, uh, all members of the population have an equal chance of being chosen. Non-random, you just use a method that's not at random to choose a sample from the population. Okay, so now, so the two main types of sampling, random, non-random. Now let's look at, there's different types of random sampling. There are three types that we'll talk about. There's simple random sampling. That's choosing a specific number of people randomly from the entire population. So the example I have here is having a computer randomly choose 100 students from our school population. So, you know, let's say we have every school entered into a database on the, or every student from the school entered into a database on our computer, and then we just have the computer randomly choose 100 students from that database um, from the entire population. Okay, that's just simple random. Choose a um, specific number, so we chose 100 students um, at complete random from the entire population. So, randomly chose 100 students from the entire school population. So, that's simple random. There is systematic random. That's choosing members of a population at fixed intervals from a randomly selected member. So the keyword here, intervals. Okay? So systematic intervals. So systematic random sampling, choosing members of population at fixed intervals from a randomly selected member of the population. For example, um, if we have a list of all the students at the school, if we pick a random starting point and then choose every eighth student until you have 100 students for the survey, that's systematic because we've chosen a random starting point and then chose, chose members of the population at a fixed interval, every eight student, okay, um, until we have 100 students for the survey. So random starting point, then choosing students from, then choosing people from the population at a fixed interval from that starting point. That's systematic. So once again, um, make the connection between systematic and choosing, choosing people from the population at intervals. And the last type we'll talk about is stratified random sampling. That's when um, you divide a population into distinct groups. Okay, that's the, the key word for this one, stratified groups. Um, so you divide the population into groups and then choose the same fraction of members from each group. So an example of that, let's say the principal chooses to survey 10% of the students from each grade. So once again, the population is divided into, has been divided into groups. So it's been divided into the different grades. So we have a grade 9, 10, and grade 9, 10, 11, and 12 group. 
and then we choose 10% of the students from each group. Okay, so that would be stratified random sampling. So systematic is at intervals, stratified is divided into groups, and then choose the same percentage from each group. So let's classify each of these following sampling techniques as either simple random, systematic random, stratified random, or um, if it's just a completely non-random sample. So A, the principal selects people that work in the cafeteria to interview about the quality of cafeteria food. Okay, so first of all, let's say, okay, what's the population um, for this survey? Uh, we're talking about cafeteria food here. So the population, I think, would be everyone who eats the cafeteria food, everyone who experiences what the cafeteria food is like. So that would be all of the students in the school, all of the staff, all the people that work in the cafeteria. But the principal has only chosen to select only the cafeteria workers. So that's completely non-random. Everyone in the population does not have an equal chance of being chosen. Only the people that work in the cafeteria have a chance of being chosen. That's non-random. Okay? That, and, and think of it this way as well. The people in the cafeteria, that's not a good representation of the entire population's opinion about the, about the food in the cafeteria. They're gonna, probably going to have um, a different view on the food that they make compared to the people who don't make it and just eat it and have an unbiased opinion about the food. B, a computer program to randomly select 100 names from a club's member list. So that's just a, a simple random sample. I'll go through back to the definition here. Simple random is choosing a specific number, so they're choosing 100 people, not complete random from the entire population. So they've got a list of all of the members, and they're choosing a specific number from um, all those members at complete random. So that's simple random. C. So we have students are selected at random with the number of students in each group selected proportional to the size of the age group. So you see this keyword group here. And you remember when we talk about groups, dividing a population into groups? That's stratified random. So when you divide a population into groups and then choose the same percentage of people from each group, that's stratified random. And that's what's happening here. Students are selected at random with the number of students in each age group. So they're dividing the groups based on age, um, select proportional to the size of the age group. So we're choosing the same percentage from each group as stratified random. And D, to select 100 people who can buy concert tickets, the ticket agent randomly selects one wristband number and then every tenth number after that. So they're the, um, the, the sampling technique they're doing in that interval. So they chose a random starting point. So they, they picked one wristband randomly. That's their starting point. And then they choose every tenth wristband after that. So that's choosing at a fixed interval. So remember, intervals is systematic random. Good. So we have an example here of all three types of random sampling and an example of a non-random sampling technique. Now let's do a couple of uh, multiple choice questions here. Hobson's company surveyed its 2,000 customers by generating 200 random numbers between 1 and 2,000, and then selecting names from the customer list corresponding to these numbers. So what we have here, company has 2,000 customers, and then they just picked 200 random customers from those 2,000. So it shows a specific number of customers from the entire population at random. That's the definition of simple random. Okay? So they didn't divide them into groups. They didn't do it at intervals. But it is random because, you know, 200 people are being chosen at random. So that's simple random. Which of the following is not an example of random sampling? So three of these will be random, and one of them is going to be non-random. Let's figure it out. So use a random number generator to pick 10% of the players in each division of a hockey league. So, you know, the, the population um, are all the players in the league. They've been divided into groups based on division. Okay, so this is, and they're choosing 10% from each division. So that, that's clearly a stratified random sampling technique. So that one's random. So it's not that one. B, use a randomly generated number between 1 and 10 to pick a name on a list and then select every eighth person on the list. So, you know, they chose a random starting point and they're choosing people at intervals from there. That is systematic random, so it's not that one. Um, C, ask every 10th person entering a mall for an opinion on government spending on health care. I'm going to argue that that one's non-random. If you're choosing, if you're only, um, so it, let's first decide what the population is. So government spending on health care, 
you know, so we're talking about, you know, um, all of the people in Ontario here, all of the people in Canada. Um, that's a big population. If you're only asking people to go to a specific mall, that's not very random because, you know, the people shopping in a mall in a certain, um, a certain area of the city aren't going to represent everyone in the entire city's um, opinion. So I'm going to say that one is non-random. Let's just make sure by looking at D. D says write names on slips of paper and then pick the names out of a hat, making sure the pieces of paper are well mixed. So, you know, that's, that's a simple random technique like the cookie draw we were talking about where everyone's name is in a hat and then, you know, everyone has an equal chance of being chosen. That's random. Okay. So, which of the following is a systematic random sample? So, remember systematic, we're looking for something about um, choosing people at a fixed interval um, from a random starting point. That's what a systematic random sample is. So, let's see if we can find that. A name is randomly selected from a list of store customers and every tenth person is selected before and after it. I think we found it right away. Um, a name is randomly selected from a list, so we've got a random starting point. Um, and then we choose every tenth person on the list um, before and after it. So we're choosing at a fixed interval. This is it right here. Now, the last thing we want to talk about is what bias is. So bias is error resulting from choosing a sample that does not represent the entire population. So if you've chosen a sample that does not represent the entire population, the results of, uh, of your study are, are going to involve bias, and you don't want that. Okay, so a sample could be biased if it is, well, if it is any of these things, if it's too small. So if you choose a sample that's too small, it's not going to be a good representation of your entire population, okay? So there could be bias present. Or um, it could bias could be present if it is only based on one gender or one group. So let's say you divide a population into groups, then you only survey one group, okay? It's going to be very biased. Let's say, or like, or let's say, let's say you only surveyed women or only surveyed men. It's going to be biased because you need the opinion of both genders to have a good representation of the population. See, or if you don't randomly draw um, the sample. Okay, so if you do a non-random sample, there's going to be bias present. So, sample is biased if it is all of the above. If any of those occur, if you're going to, there's going to be bias present in the, in your survey. So make sure you complete the worksheets, make sure you know the difference between the different sampling techniques um, and the difference between a random sample and a non-random sample. Okay? If you have any questions, just make sure you let me know and make sure you, you, know, you can get the worksheet from jensenmath.ca.